Hey everyone, and welcome to our weekly news roundup covering all the exciting changes as we approach Shadowlands. Last week, we talked about our concerns with a ton of trinkets. Quite a large number were either incredibly powerful or broken, dealing far too much pressure. We discussed which of these trinkets were in this category, which are trinkets all available from world quests, dungeons, or raids coming in Shadowlands. This represents a common issue they have, that they all come from PvE sources, making players just want to gear from PvP pretty frustrated. However, Ion himself recently tweeted addressing the issues of these trinkets being largely untuned. Due to focusing on class-specific abilities, they haven't gotten around to tweaking the trinkets, which is more than fair due to the pre-patch being hit, where these trinkets aren't coming into use for quite some time. It's good to see that we're being heard about our issues with these trinkets, but hopefully that means they will look to nerf all the trinkets that are overperforming. My other concern, though, is if the PvP 2-set bonuses from trinkets will be further changed in order to combat the PvE trinkets from being used. So, do you guys feel like this bonus will stop the use of PvE trinkets even if they are nerfed? Let us know in the comment section below. Alright, on to the most recent beta build. There has been a massive amount of changes, including tons of legendary items, class changes, soulbind abilities, conduits, alongside a few covenant changes. There appears to be one change to an essence though, being Vision of Perfection, seeming to be a slight buff in the cooldown reduction aspect of it. Being that essences are unavailable in Shadowlands, this won't affect gameplay too much other than any pre-patch content for any classes that use this essence. In general, as we know, some essences are quite overtuned at this point in time, but not having them when Shadowlands comes out means that we won't have to deal with them anymore. There were also quite a number of new class changes being made, most of them being direct percentage nerfs or buffs to certain abilities, or their overall damage and healing. We won't be going over all of these, so if you want to check out all the notes for yourself, feel free to visit WoWhead to see every change that's going on. Alright, now that we've gotten through that big list of changes, we can now look onto other topics in this week's news. And the first topic is the confusion around PvP Gladiator titles. It was believed that come Shadowlands or even the pre-patch, these titles will become account-wide, being able to use them on any character on an account that has earned this title. This theory has now been put to rest thanks to Blizzard's clarification. So PvP Gladiator titles will not be account-wide. Neither will rank 1 titles as both of them will remain character specific. However, the Gladiator Mount reward will actually be available to all characters on the account permanently. Now that this has been clarified, I personally find it quite odd that the Gladiator title is character specific, yet the Gladiator Mount is account wide, as they are both rewards for the exact same achievement. Other mounts have been account wide, including the Mythic Raid difficulty only mounts such as Glacial Tidestorm and Nia Lotha Allseer. So seeing the Gladiator Mounts being included alongside these other ones definitely does make sense. As such, it also seems that the Gladiator titles should be account-wide due to most other titles being account-wide as well. I compare it to Mythic Raid titles, as these are account-wide, which are usually only done on one type of class for some players. They're then able to freely use the title on their alt classes, even if they never get to the stage of slaying the end boss at Mythic difficulty in the latest raid. Due to this, I don't really see the problem with Gladiator titles being account-wide as well. But enough about me and my opinions. What do you guys think of having character-specific PvP titles and shareable Gladiator mounts on your accounts? What would be your personal preference in this regard? Anyway, moving on, as many of you know, or maybe most of you don't know, some abilities that require pathing have been bugging out on certain maps due to terrain of those maps. Thankfully, Blizzard have fixed these issues, buffing pathing from these abilities, allowing the use of them to be even stronger, which will be excellent in Arena. The abilities in question will be for these four abilities for their according classes and specs. A Warlock's Demonic Gateway and a Warrior's Heroic Leap will be the biggest ones here in terms of PvP scenarios. Gateway will be a big one as it will basically buff the classes playing with a Warlock. Warrior specifically has had its ups and downs with Heroic Leap as it's constantly being changed with where we can or cannot leap to. Hopefully with this change we'll be able to leap up or down platforms with ease allowing for more fluid gameplay. Next up, as the pre-patch was released, little to our knowledge, Blizzard implemented a change that many PvP players have been wanting to see. You guessed it right, it's the fact that PvP scaling no longer exists on retail. This is fantastic news, as it means a number of things. Firstly, all damage and healing numbers implemented will read the same numbers from both parties. So, the damage and healing you deal will simply be the damage and healing you actually deal. PvP scaling brought a ton of gimmick effects with it that while not many players knew how to abuse, it was later found out with recognizing big flaws within the PvP scaling system. 
An example of this was the fact that you could one-shot people when unequipping gear, another could be lower levels killing higher levels as well. The biggest gimmick which caused outrage across many PvP players was the fact that putting on additional sockets ended up nerfing your damage and healing rather than what should have logically been buffing it. Now that PvP scaling is no more, all trinket effects are performing worse if you are lower geared as well, meaning that gear could be more impactful as we head into Shadowlands. It really is just amazing that we don't have to deal with these gimmicky problems anymore now that PvP scaling is finally gone. Alright, some of you may be looking to play an allied race during the release of Shadowlands. Usually that would mean farming a specific faction to exalt it, which could take quite a lot of time as well as being time-gated itself. Thankfully, this has now been changed, removing the exalted requirements to unlock allied races. You still need to unlock certain achievements though in order to play specific races. Here are the achievements linked to unlocking these listed allied races. A few of you may also be wondering how you can gain access to the BFA, Aspirant, and Gladiator transmog appearances. They were planned to be sold by vendors on the beta. However, this is not the case as the pre-patch hit, meaning the only way to acquire these sets is by purchasing them with Marks of Honor during the expansion launch. You can check out all of these sets on Wowhead, which cover all the BFA Aspirant sets, as well as the Gladiator Ensembles, which will both be purchased by Marks of Honor in case you want to hold onto them. Next up, with the pre-patch finally landing, unfortunately this leads to almost an inevitable amount of class bugs. However, these are being addressed and will hopefully be looking to be fixed as soon as possible. Rep Paladins truly seem to be unlucky, as right now there appears to be multiple bugs, mainly to do with their Crusade ability. Windwalker Monks also seem to be in a similar dilemma with their Storm, Earth, and Fire CD. There are a number of bugs, but one especially interesting one, which has both been in the game for quite some time and is also not commonly known by PvP players, and that is that Whirling Dragon Punch deals 300% increased damage at the end of Storm, Earth, and Fire. This was heavily abused before when you could cancel Storm, Earth, and Fire cooldown. Lastly, Dark Thoughts is also having a couple of issues, making it slightly less effective than it should be. We are not though, as usually with most bugs, if they find out the error causing it, they will usually be quick at fixing them. Moving on, any Arena World Championship PvP fans will constantly support their favorite teams and players during the AWC. For those that do not know, the AWC is usually a year-long program from Blizzard that gives PvP players a chance to compete against each other for big prize money and the chance to become champions of the game. Recently, actions of certain players in the AWC scene have come to Blizzard's attention. This has resulted in suspensions to three of the top players in the EU scene, being Looney, Raikou, and Swapsy, and it's the first time we've seen indefinite suspensions being passed out. Due to these actions, both Raikou and Swapsy have issued public apologies on their Twitter accounts. It also means that both players are dropped of their organizations effective immediately. Alright, quickly moving on to classic WoW news, PTR testing has now begun with Nax Ramus. This means you'll be able to try out the bosses in the military quarter of this nostalgic raid. You may also be wondering how to enter the raid zone or if you can test the raid with less than 40 players. These questions, as you can see, have been asked and answered here. Alright, that covers this week's round of news in World of Warcraft. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.